Welcome, this is Zahn with Repo Products. This is Revit Tips and Tricks, tip number 23 and 24. Tip number 23 is how to use mass objects and the shading of those objects to help create depth within your elevation, similar to depth queuing. Tip number 24 is how to modify the base layer of a wall when you're looking at it in section. Heading over to an elevation view, you can see here we have this building and I have shadows turned on. And if I turn my thin lines command back off, you can see that the line work is kind of there, kind of isn't there. And the level of depth really doesn't show that much. To get context, we're looking at the elevation from standing here looking this way. And so we know that this wall is in front this wall is behind this one, and this wall is behind these two walls. And I want to be able to show this stronger than this, which is stronger than this. To do so, I have masses created, and by default I have them turned off. If I turn them on, you can start to see that the portion of this wall here is darker than this portion of the wall here, which is darker than the back wall. If I select the mass object, I can go over to right click and override graphics by view and by element and you can see that I have it turned on and it's set to color black and it has a transparency of 20. If I select the other mass object and go to its element override you can also see that it has black and solid fill but its transparency is zero. In other words it's more opaque and it looks a little darker. You can use these features to make your elevation look more realistic from the depth standpoint. This is prior to using depth queuing, which if you click to visibility graphics display option, depth queuing is here and it's available. The next tip that we're talking about is modifying the layer base placement in a section. Heading over to a section view of this wall, you can see that uh, I have this particular wall here, and I want to be able to set it up to be able to see that the wall comes all the way down to this particular foundation here. That section is here. And for the sake of ease, I'm going to take this particular curtain wall or tab into this particular curtain wall and we'll delete it for the purposes of ease so you can see it. And go back to this section and you can see that the original curved wall <coughs> goes all the way down here. And I want to take this portion of this layer of the sheathing, the airspace, and the exterior and take that down while holding this portion still. I can select this wall, go to its type properties, click edit under structure, click preview, and switch to section view. Now zoom in to that location, click modify, and unlock that, and also unlock the next one and the next one. The unlocking features for each of the layers of the walls have to be done to each adjacent layer that you want. You cannot lock this one and then lock this one and keep this one locked. When you're finished, click OK. And now you'll notice that as I select it, um, I can make any adjustments necessary. So again, let's do that one more time, clicking Edit Type, scrolling down to that view in the section, click Edit under Structure, click Modify, and verify that that is unlocked. Verify that that's unlocked and then verify that that's unlocked as well. If necessary, you can unlock other layers as well. And when you're done, click OK, click OK, and it should give you the arrows that you need. Make sure when you are in this section edit assembly window, when you click the modify command, you're in the command to modify that portion. Once they are unlocked, 
then you need to click modify again to get out of that mode and have the settings hold. Click OK, click OK again, and now you should see two triangles instead of one. And if I scroll and pull this, you should see that it comes down. If necessary, you can use the align command to align that portion and lock it if you have to. And this is the way to modify the base layer of just the layer makeup of the wall that you need to make that design adjustment. And that is the tips and tricks number 23 and 24.